Hey guys, Walleye Freak here. Thought I would try to do something a little different. Instead of just posting pictures of jigs that I've made, I thought I would try to make a video tonight showing you guys uh, how to I tie up the marabou jig. I uh, thought it might be uh, good and instructional for uh, the guys who uh, are just learning or maybe are interested in, in learning how to tie up jigs. Uh, don't know how well this is going to turn out. I am actually don't have a good camcorder, so I am doing this on my... Uh, my laptop or my MacBook, so hopefully it'll turn out and you'll be able to uh, see what I'm doing. So, I'm going to start out first, uh, talk a little bit about your tools. Obviously, you need a, a vise, um, and what I have here is a very inexpensive rotary vise. This is made by a company um, that makes di several different types. This is called a Terra vise, and it's a, a rotary. You can rotate your uh, jig around the tie from the you know, either side or the top or the bottom pretty handy. That's why I like it um, The other tool you need is uh, for your thread you need a bobbin to put your uh, thread in to wrap your thread around your jig um, And a, a nice pair of scissors uh, also pretty handy uh, And something else that I use not a necessity, uh, but I've learned how to use a whip finish tool So I use it all the time now when I tie and uh, that's pretty close to all the tools that you need to tie this particular jig. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Go ahead and get our jig set up in the vise. And uh, the nice thing about this particular vise is it's got a little cantilever here. So you can wrench it down pretty good and keep your jig good and tight in the vise. That is very important. You want your jig to be nice and tight uh, so it doesn't rotate or move while you're trying to tie. Um, okay, so now we're going to start out with our thread, and we're going to lay our thread down. We're going to get a nice little base, so what you do is you start by grabbing hold of the tag in with your free hand, lay it over the top of the jig, and then take a couple wraps, and then start wrapping back over your tag in, and then just wrap back towards the hook point. And then once you get to about the hook point, you can go ahead and cut off your thread and then bring it back forward and then go to about the midpoint which is where I like to start if I'm going to be tying in marabou. Um, I'm going to be tying uh, a gray shad pattern jig tonight and so I'm going to start out I've already pulled out uh, my marabou feather that I'm going to use and as you can see it's a shad gray color and then the chenille that I'm also going to tie is also called uh, a shad gray and you can see it's got uh, silver and black uh, intermingled in there and probably be a nice uh, should make a nice looking pattern and then for a little added flash I'm going to put in a little of the, uh, the crystal flash pearl um, and uh, always adds a nice little flash to the tail so we start out, we're going to crimp down our marabou here. This looks to be a nice fluffy feather, as you can see. Hopefully you can see in the video. It's got uh, a lot of nice fullness to it, um, a lot of surface area there that will really collect the water. And, you know, once it gets wet and it's in the water, it'll have, it'll undulate with any current that's in the water at all. So it adds you know, a nice little finesse movement, even when you're just vertical jigging. So you want to start out, and you want to measure your marabou to be about the length of your jig. Now these have some, you'll see some really fine strands here, but I'm going to look for the main bulk of the tail to be in this section here where it's nice and full. And I want that to measure from the head, from the front of the jig, to the back of the hook. So once I get that measurement, that's how long I want my marabou to be, I'm going to lay it on my jig, on the hook, right where I have my bobbin currently set. And then I'm going to get a little extra line or a little thread here, and then make two loose wraps around the hook, and then tighten it. And to tighten it, is don't pull straight down on your bobbin. Pull your bobbin towards you, and what this will do is it'll pull the thread tight, but it'll keep your marabou from wrapping around the hook and you, because you really don't want that. You want it just to kind of fluff down over the hook. Once we have our two anchor wraps in, 
we're going to go ahead and we're going to wrap it back about as far as we did our base, which is back to the point of the hook. And then we'll get you back to there and then go ahead and wrap it forward and anchor that feather in good and tight and then go ahead and cut off your excess feather. And then one of the things, you probably noticed me drop that feather, one of the things I like to do is put a trash can right down between my legs so whenever I do my trimmings, that's right where they go. I don't have to look around. Probably also noticed that I've got my scissors in my hand. Love to tie with the scissors in my hand rather than laying them down. Uh, you've seen some of the pictures of my tying bench um, <laughs> and it's usually a pretty good mess. So you want to get out of the habit of laying it down because then you're like, all right, where in the heck did the scissors get to? Okay, next thing, now that we've got our feather, our tail tied in, we've got our marabou feather tied in, going to go over and we're going to get our crystal flash here and what I like to do is to pull off like four strands uh, don't like it to be I like it to add just a little touch of flash I don't want it to be overbearing so I usually cut off about four strands and then we take that and we'll anchor it in on one side now the easiest way to do this give yourself a little slack in your thread again or you know a little distance here and it's probably going to be difficult for you to see um, with this video, but we start by running the crystal flash below the hook. And then as you pull the thread up, that will actually pull the crystal flash up flush and even with the side of the hook on this side. And then I'll wrap that back and I'll wrap it right to the end of where I had um, my thread that I tied back for my feather. And then I'm going to wrap back forward to where I was and then stop. And then we'll take and we'll clip off the crystal flash even with the back of the tail of the jig. And then here's the nice thing about the rotary vise is I can just rotate that around and I can do the exact same thing on the other side to get my flash anchored in for the other side of the jig. Now We'll go ahead and you'll wrap this back. And you want to be careful as you wrap this back that you don't want to go past the end of the thread. Because for me, and maybe it's just a you know, personal aesthetic thing, I like the flash to run down um, almost as though it was you know, the vertical line uh, on the fish instead of spreading out and wrapping all the way around. So if we've got our crystal flash anchored in. And I'm just going to wrap around again just to make sure I have a nice little base over top of my crystal flash. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to stop right back here where we ended our thread. And the next step is the chenille. Now, what I like to do is I like to take and cut off about a four to five inch piece of the chenille. And then you'll want to take and peel off some of the chenille on the end so that you're actually exposing the thread. And I'm hoping you can see that, but I'm not sure with my laptop and not a good camera. So you use that thread as your anchor point for your chenille. You lay that on top of the hook and just do a nice little loose wrap around and a second one and then pull that tight. And then go ahead and wrap forward. And the reason that you do this with the exposing the thread instead of just wrapping straight to the chenille is it keeps from adding a you know unneeded bulk right there at the back where the chenille starts. So my uh, my vice has a bobbin holder here. I get the bobbin out of the way. And as I said before, the lateral line is what I'm trying to emulate with my crystal flash. So one of the things I'm trying to do is to make sure that I don't move that when I start wrapping the chenille. And if you're not careful, if you just go ahead and start wrapping, what happens is the chenille has you know all kinds of burrs and tinsels and things sticking out and it will grab that crystal flash and it'll spin it around the hook. 
which again, I don't like. So what I do is I will start by holding the Marabou and the Crystal Flash with my free hand and I'll wrap the first wrap around. I'll hold the chenille with my index finger and then pull it up and at this point we're good. It's not going to rotate it anymore. And then I'll go ahead and I'll start palmering the chenille forward. And the way I like to do it is do the palmering with my left hand until I get to the bottom, grab it with my right, pull it up, and again, palmer all the way forward until you get right up behind the jig head. And then you're going to pull it up on this side. Go ahead and drop your bobbin back down. And you want to hold the chenille out in front of the jig like this because you need to anchor that chenille down now with your thread. So what you'll do is you'll take one wrap around and then go ahead and pull that tight and then do a second wrap around and pull that one good and snug. This ensures that your thread is actually getting down uh, to the hook shank and is not bound up too much on the chenille. Then fold the chenille back towards the back of the jig and wrap two more times. And then go ahead and clip your chenille off and get it out of your way. Now at this point, you're mostly done. You just want to take and wrap a couple more times to get her good and anchored in there. And finish off with your knot. And again, you don't need a whip finish tool. You can do this you know, by half hitches. I used to do half hitches all the time, but then I learned how to do a whip finish, use the whip finish tool. So that's what I use now. And I like to put in a couple knots. The first one I'll do about a four base wrap. And then I do usually two easy or two short ones, like two double wraps. Just helps to ensure um, that you keep it locked down well. And then clip your thread off and you're done. And there is a 132nd ounce. If you want to call him a gray ghost, I guess that would be close. Gray shad marabou with a gray shad chenille on a white jig head. Uh, well, I hope uh, that turned out well enough that you guys can see it. And uh, if you like it, maybe I will try to create some more. Thanks.